Dominica's Broadcasting Station presents Inside Developments. Join us as we visit Dominica's International Airport. See the work as it develops. Now, let's meet the team. We are now at runway 33. We are at the point of runway 33. And believe it or not, this wide, vast area that you are presently seeing is actually 33 meters below the finished height of the runway. Can you imagine it? And this is not the deepest one as yet. So this is just to give you a, a, an example of the massive work that is being done and some of the challenges that these guys make look so easy. Well, firstly, we had to clear uh, all the area to be able to reach here, this point, because this is one of our priorities, the lowest point of the airport, because obviously we have to construct from bottom up. So we are at the bottom of one valley where we are going to construct the culvert number one. So what you can see behind me is um, all the equipment Remove, removing the soil that is not suitable for us to do the embankment on top of that. So we are replacing that bad material with a good material and compacting it because that material will have to sustain the load of those 33 meters high of embankment. Well, uh, because we have to construct a runway that has to be flat, basically. The tolerance for the runways are very small, so obviously you cannot construct a runway that goes up and down. So we need to level the area. But because of the direct direction of the wind, we have to face the runway against the predominant wind, the trade winds. And doing that, we are crossing all the valleys, several valleys. So we need to backfill those valleys. We need to cut the hills and backfill the valleys. And that's a huge work here. That's the challenge of this project. Yes. That's a problem that we are having. We knew, but that's the way it is. It's the, the weather here that rains a lot. And um, because of the type of soil that are clays, when we have rain, we cannot access to the site. So yeah, that's a challenge. And what you're seeing at the bottom here is really an extraction of the what, what is referred to as the black soil, which is your wet, muddy um, material that sits in the in the bottom of a valley, which is where we are. Um, and to extract all of that and then replace it with a more suitable, compactable um, aggregate of material that you can then place a culvert on top of to ensure that water flows freely so we are at a point which is as you was indicated earlier 33 meters and in for those who think in imperial that's over 100 feet over 100, 108 feet there about beneath the um the runway and why are we this deep because the valleys coming up to this point run to this to this level so you want to keep you don't want to stop the water you want to keep the water flowing so there will be around four or five culverts like this or bigger, some smaller, depending on, on the volumes and the calculations that need to be running beneath the runway. Now, people might, might get all panicky. I mean, there's water underneath the runway. Yes, there's water in the runway. And there has been water underneath Douglas Charles um, Airport for some time as well, because that airport was built um, Pretty much in a riverbed, right? When you when you look at where Douglas Charles is, so uh, and I, I know at some point in time there was discussion about water on the site. Dominica has water, right? So you you have to design around it. But water has has never been an impediment to development of large infrastructure projects like this. Actually, we have several examples of airports being built out in this in the sea where there is reclaimed land and you create the, the foundation. Um, I mean, Hong Kong is one that come to mind, uh, Narita and a few in Japan come to mind, where you've actually reclaimed land and you've gone out to sea to, to, um, to, to build a runway. I think some of that had to happen in St. Vincent as well uh, to get the land. But fortunately for us, all we have to deal with is um, surface runoff and runoff from the valley. So 
the hydrology, hydrology work that has been done to size the culverts, um, not only for the amount of water that will run through, but also to be large enough to be maintained. Because we've all seen when there is um, heavy rains, it's not clear, crystal clear water running. There is debris and trees and all of that um, coming through as well. So we need to ensure that there wouldn't be blockage of the culverts underneath the, um, the runway. So this is a good example of one of um, uh, three or four uh, similar culverts that would need to be done. Um, and then on our, our drive back, I think it'll be very beneficial uh, so your audience can see the, the amount of work that has gone on to get us to this point. Yeah, it's not, it's not off the main road, so driving by you might not see it, but um, um, it's a tremendous amount of work that has happened in um, since major work started in March and then it stepped up in June to get us to this point. Yeah, um, but it's it's really phenomenal to see what what has happened so far and is is happening. We now come to the end of episode two of Inside Development's International Airport Projects Update, highlighting the progress and developments of Runway 33. Stay tuned for episode three, where we will take you to Terminal 15, the very center of the operations, and a glimpse into the future.